Welcome back everybody to another video from Eichmann Milan, the biggest and best motorcycle show in the world and we're back at Royal Enfield for a look at this, the classic 650. Now there are a lot of bikes now in the 650 lineup. You've got the Interceptor, the Continental ET, the Super Meteor, the Shotgun 650, the new Bear 650. So is there space for another bike in the 650 lineup? Well, we'll have a good look at it. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I think. Now look, no big surprises here on the engine front. It's the 650 air cooled twin. It's a proven performer, not massively powerful at 47 horses, but it does the job and it's got a really nice feel to it. That's really gonna suit an old school looking bike like this. It's got a 270 degree crank, which gives it a really nice sound at the exhaust. It's got that air cooled feel as well. And also it is decent on torque. It's just over 50 Newton meters. So if you're riding solo, there is enough there to have a little bit of fun with it. So look, the same engine as the other the bikes, but where this deviates a little bit is with the chassis because you can see it's sort of an old school Bobbery cruiser style bike. And so they've given it these covered forks, which really do give it a lot of that look. Now this one is a little bit lower slung, uh, 120 mil in the suspension travel to the Bear 650, which we looked at earlier. That's another new bike that's a little bit jacked up and scramblery. And you've only got 90 mil of travel on the shocks as well, but it should be enough for cruising around. And like I say, it plays into what this bike is all about. Now it's also got the spoke wheels with a 19 inch at front and 18 at the rear. They've got road focused tires from MRF. And as for the braking, well, you've got a 320 mil disc up front with a single two pot caliper that's Royal Enfield branded. But then at the rear, you've got a nice big 300 mil disc which suits I would say the sort of riding style you'd expect for a slightly cruiserish bike I think that's probably the same braking setup as the Super Meteor 650 and yeah with these kinds of bikes and Harleys and other cruisers like that you know you do use both the front and a brake to get it to stop quickly fully fueled up they're saying 243 kilograms for the whole package which is probably because of a lot of the extra metal and stuff like this you know you're going to pay a price for such a fancy looking bike and so this one's realistically for wafting between corners rather than charging into them Sitting on it though, well it isn't super low slung, so your bum's not scraping the floor. It's similar with the Shotgun 650 and the Super Meter actually. They're not that low in the seat, and so it's more like a regular upright retro riding position than it is a proper low slung Indian Scout or something like that. On those bikes though, I think it's actually for the best because you don't feel so vulnerable and low if you're riding in traffic. And I think the rest of the ergonomics on this bike are gonna be really comfy as well. So a nice swept up bar that sweeps back a little bit to make it really easy to reach. You've got mid position foot controls as well. I'm not a big fan of forward controls, so that suits me nicely as well. And all round, I mean, you know, you'll have to pay for an accessory passenger seat if you wanna take someone with you. But from a rider's perspective, I really like how this feels a lot. By the way, the seat height figure specifically is 800 mil. I forgot to mention that. Now in the cockpit, this is another thing I really, really like about this bike because it reminds me of my dad's old Bullet 350 that had these little position lights up here and the Speedo like sunk into this headlight nacelle. It really does look the absolute business. And also from a rider's perspective, I think it's probably quite pleasant to use as well. It's a really easy to read speedo. You've got the digital readout set into the middle there. And also the tripper navigation pod off to the right, which you can sync up with the Enfield app and get turn by turn navigation directions from. So some modern capability on what is a very traditional looking bike. As for the switch gear, well, you've got the same switch gear as the super meter and bikes like that. Nice and chunky and easy to use. And I really do like it a lot. And so all round, that is a really nice looking place to sit if you're on the bike. Now, before we get onto the next bit, I just want to say a massive thanks to DJI for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video and providing us with these fantastic cameras that we use back home for doing our reviews and stuff. But also we bring them here to shoot at the shows because they're a nice little handheld Bob's eye view. This is the Osmo Action 5, which is their latest and greatest. And we love using them because they're so small and compact, so they don't feel big and heavy if you mount them on your helmet. They've got brilliant battery life, better than all the competition, and also a really convenient magnetic mounting system, which makes them easy to move around the bike or just stick on your lid. And so all around, they're brilliant for filming on the bike and off. So do check out the link down in the description below. And once again, a massive thanks for DJI for supporting us and making trips like this and coverage like this possible. Top of the video though, I was kind of questioning does this fit into the lineup or is there a place for it? And I think you have to say that probably is based upon how it looks. It really is a striking bike, especially in this teal paint job with the gold pinstriping around the tank and on the mudguard there. And so for me, yeah, it definitely stands apart in terms of the aesthetic. It's a lot more old school than the other cruisers like the Meteor and the uh, Shotgun 650. And if you really do want that very 
heritage inspired look from Royal Enfield, then this is probably the one that does it best in the 650 lineup. We've got a couple of other colours here on the stand. There's one that's sort of maroon with a white tank. That's got a slightly modern looking paint job on the side of the tank. So, you know, something a little bit different if you want it, but probably the one that looks the most Enfield in my book is the black with the gold and a bit of chrome on the tank. That is typical Enfield. And so, yeah, probably gonna be popular that one, although, I still think this teal would be my pick. It's really a lovely color when you see it in the flesh and it's got a bit of metallic flake to it. And then you've got to consider the price. It starts at around six and a half grand for the most basic paint jobs. And that basically makes it on a par with the Interceptor 650, you know, the more upright, sort of 70s inspired retro, which I think is kind of the default in the lineup. You sort of start with that and then if you want something that's a little bit of a different flavor, you can look elsewhere. So yeah, if the visuals are your cup of tea, there's not really like a price penalty for getting something that looks a bit more fancy. And so I think it absolutely does fit in to the Enfield lineup. So look, some quick arbitrary bob scores. This one gets two out of five for performance. You know, it's not really about going quick, although it does have plenty of strength in the low revs with that engine and the torque. And then I think I'll go two on 10 as well in terms of spec and features. You know, it's not necessarily built to be flashy in terms of the chassis components, but you do get that tripper pod, which probably lifts it above a one. Looks wise, I'm gonna go four on five for this one. It is a very striking looking bike, but it's maybe not as universally appealing as something like the Bear 650 we just looked at, just because it really does go very old school. But I still think you gotta say they've done a great job on the styling. And then again, five on five for value for money from Enfield. They always seem to do a great job with their pricing. That makes it, I believe, 13, correct? 13 out of 20. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of it. So let us know down in the comments. We've got a playlist on the screen now as well of all of our Eichmer content. So do check it out. Loads of bikes still to come. Hit subscribe as well if you want to see the videos coming out as they come out, as soon as they come out. A massive thanks for watching this one. And we'll see you in the next one.